Friends and family, good morning and welcome to St. Paul the Apostle Catholic Church. Welcome to our Mass today. Today we celebrate the 13th Friday in Ordinary Time. All peoples clap your hands, cry to God with shouts of joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. Friends, coming together as God's family, we call to mind our sins and failures, and we ask God that He grants us pardon and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The span of Sarah's life was 127 years. She died in Kiria Darba, that is, Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham performed the customary morning rites for her. Then he left the side of his dead one and addressed the Hittites. Although I am a resident alien among you, sell me from your holdings a piece of property for a burial ground that I may bury my dead wife. After the transaction, Abraham buried his wife, Sarah, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, facing Mamre, that is, Hebron, and the land of Canaan. Abraham had now reached a ripe old age, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. Abraham said to, a senior, to the senior servant of his household, who had charge of all his possessions, Put your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not procure a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I live, but that you will go to my own land into my kindred to get a wife for my son Isaac. The servant asked him, what if the woman is unwilling to follow me to this land? Should I then take your son back to the land from which you migrated? Never take my son back there for any reason Abraham, to Abraham told him, The Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and the land of my kin, and who confirmed my oath the promise he then made to me, I will give this land to your descendants, he will send his messenger before you, and you will obtain a wife for my son there. If the woman is unwilling to follow you, you will be released from this oath, but never take my son back there. A long, a long time later, Isaac went to live in the region of the Negeb. One day toward evening, he went out in the field. And as he looked around, he noticed that camels were approaching. Rebekah too was looking about. And when she saw him, she alighted from her camel and asked the servant, who is, this, who is the man out there walking through the fields toward us? That is my master, replied the servant. Then she covered herself with her veil. The servant recounted to Isaac all the things he had done. Then Isaac took Rebekah into his tent. He married her, and thus she became his wife. In his love for her, Isaac found solace after the death of his mother, Sarah. The Word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Who can tell the mighty deeds of the Lord or, or proclaim all his praises? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Blessed are they who observe what is right, who do always what is just. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Visit me with your saving help. 
that I may see the prosperity of your chosen ones. Rejoice in the joy of your people and glory with your inheritance. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the customs post. He said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat with Jesus and his disciples. The Pharisees saw this and said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? He heard this and said, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. Go and learn the meaning of the words, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Friends, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. The term Pharisee means separated. It means to be detached from the world. They strictly observe the tradition of the elders, especially on ritual cleanliness. So they separate themselves from anything that is unclean. <clears throat> but what is wrong with this? Nothing. In fact, this must be our attitude today. We should not join the world in sinfulness. We should not engage in the wicked deeds of others. But separation is different from isolation. Isolation is the thing that I've got nothing to do with the world, as isolation is to only care about my soul and myself. Isolation is withdrawing from those, into, from, in, from, from, from the world. And that is definitely not our call. Lumen Gentium tells us we are not in the world we are in the world, but we are not of the world. How can we be salt if, we, if salt does not mingle with the meat or with the flesh? How can we be light if light does not mingle with darkness and shine in its midst? So while we do not engage in the wicked deeds of others, we definitely should be willing to immerse ourselves into the world reach out to others, change the world from the inside. This is precisely what Jesus did in the gospel today. He knew Matthew. He knew that Matthew was a tax collector, and he knew what that meant. According to rabbinical teaching, a tax collector was to be excluded from any religious fellowship. Any money that may come from him was to be considered defiled. He was not to be permitted to serve as a witness in a court of law. He was considered to be a moral leper, an untouchable. And Jesus knew this. But despite of that, Jesus said to him, Follow me, Matthew. Be my disciple. And the choice of Jesus seems unlikely, but Jesus saw something in Matthew that he can work on. He wanted to transform Matthew, and he knew that that was not impossible. And so the first step was to call him, to reach out to him. He did not avoid Matthew. He called him. He did not engage in the sinful activity of Matthew. Instead, he reached out to him. And the rest, as they say, is history. If you think about it, this is also the story of the incarnation of Jesus. God from heaven came into the world, came in contact with all of us sinners. He pitched his tent among us, 
to transform sinners into saints. And so the story of Matthew is also the story of our own salvation. Jesus comes to us. He engages with us because he wants to transform us. And no matter how sinful we are, we are transformable. We are capable of being transformed when we allow Jesus to do so. We remember that no Christian is perfect, only forgiven. Saints were never perfect, but they tried. No one is so wicked that he or she can never change. There is hope for us, for all sinners. Let us not give up on them, let us not also give up on ourselves because Jesus looks at us not for what we are, but for what we can become. Amen. Confident in God's abiding promises to us, we bring our prayers before Him. For the church, may the Holy Spirit continue to guide and protect her. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all elected officials, may God inspire their work in serving those most in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are victims of prejudice and bias, may God be with them as they work for justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have passed away from this life in the hope of eternal life, may they soon abide in God's endless mercy and love. We pray to the Lord. And now in our silence, we offer to the Lord our own petitions and prayers. Almighty Father, you pro your promise of love and mercy has been with us throughout salvation history. Hear our prayers today as we seek to follow you more closely. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth. And work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. And so pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of this sacred gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so, it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, 
and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you. And drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Alberto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And we now offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
Behold, my dear friends, Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. O oh, Father, I pray for them that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me, says the Lord. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless and keep you and your loved ones in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.